Alright friends, welcome to another Escape from Tarkov guide. Today I want to talk to you about how to loot the village on Shoreline. It's a really solid loot route that you can do in 10-15 to 15 minutes, and if the village is untouched, I will guarantee that you will make at least 200,000 rubles every time you go through. Just from the sheer volume of stuff that's in this relatively small area, and the fact that it's relatively low traffic until the final minutes when player scavs start making their way through every section of it. Um, yeah, 200,000, I'd say, is the bare minimum, because you... Again, if it's untouched, you'll be able to fill up your bags, probably by the time you get halfway through. Um, there's just a lot of stuff packed in here, and uh, the big important feature of this route is that there are more than 20 coats scattered across the village, and those coats have a really... Um, have the, the chance to drop pretty much any key in the game. And keys can get very valuable very quickly if you find the right ones. Um, a lot of times you get dorm keys out of them which aren't that valuable, but sometimes you get a dorm marked key. Sometimes you get the Emercom medical tent key which is like somewhere around 100,000 or more. Uh, you can get reserve quest keys which are like 700k, 500k. So really the, the, there is no real cap. It, it, it's, it's a very high cap because there's so many coats. Uh, but I'd say at a bare minimum you can get 200k to uh, 500k depending on how much space you have. Uh, so what we're going to do to go through this is I've made this map. It's a screenshot of Map Genie that I drew out the route that I like to run. If you want a copy of this for yourself I have it publicly available on my Discord server that you can find an invite to in the description down below. And uh, we're going to go into an offline raid with a belt combo and a raid backpack and uh, we are going to run this route and I'll show you all the coats and talk about you know the the different ways to get them and remember just where everything is so you can do it without looking at the map every single time and then it, it gets easy to loot the place so without any further ado let's get into it yeet all right friends here we are in the raid uh, this is just a I recorded this beforehand because it's easy for me to talk without having to run through the guy, the uh, the route at the same time. So we're starting this up by the cottage, Sanitar's cottage, which is a little ways away from the village, but it's a place that if you're on a PMC and you have the key to the, the locked cottage and the safe inside, then you get two safes there because one's unlocked by default, and then the next the house next to it um, has is completely unlocked and has two safes in it that are both unlocked. So I like to use that as a starting point. It's kind of optional. That's why I marked it with zero on the map. Um, so yeah, we're starting right here at Sanitar's Cottage. If you, again, if you're PMC, you can go loot that one. Uh, start with two safes there. I am. I don't really want to start with that for this guide. So we're just gonna go to the uh, the unlocked cottage. Uh, most of the times when I do this route, I'm on a scav because it's just way safer to run through the village with all the buildings and close quarters. Um, when you don't have to worry about losing your gear, you know. Uh, so first there's a duffel bag on the porch. Um, again, the one of the... There, there's a ton of different bags in this, this route. Uh, so what we're going for with the bags is just sheer volume of loot, and then the coats are kind of what we're hoping for for quality of loot. Uh, there are two coats behind that door once you go inside, and then the two safes are upstairs. One is in the open door, closest to the stairs. Uh, and not, nothing too crazy. A GP coin is nice. You can use that for a thick item case. A little bit of loose currency. Um, my general... Um, well, in a second we'll talk about my general uh, idea with this run. Uh, you can find guns or mags or some other... Um, loose loot there. That is a safe, same as the previous safe. This one didn't happen to have much in it, but it can have all the same loot as any other safe, even though it's much smaller. There's a PC in the other room. But, yeah, like I said, for the most part we're going for volume, and uh, just, just knowing where all the different bags is, is a, a good way to get some money out of this run. Uh, duffel bag by the door closest to the other cottage. Um, normally I would like to go, you know, from Sanitar's cottage through that door in front of me, through this cottage this way, 
and then up and then out this way it's a little more smooth to do it that way but i just it, it ultimately doesn't matter so from here you're all you're going to want to run out the fence out that same door that you went in and uh then we actually enter the village proper uh there is a couple coats and duffel bags in that house to our left, but first there is a coat and a medical bag in this first spot. Right in there, it's a little hard to see, but trust me, it's there every time. The coats don't always contain anything. Sometimes they have um, cigarettes or like shattered masks, some weird specific uh, loose things, but the uh, when they don't have that, uh, it's keys. So from here, there is three duffel bags in this house. Uh, two on the lower floor, one on the top floor. Uh, I like to go to the top floor one first, just because uh, it feels better that way to me. But really, you can do it any order you uh, you want. Uh, rechargeable battery, some water. Always clutch when you're like 30 minutes into a raid and realize you forgot your stuff. Med tools. Nothing crazy. But you can see this belt combo. We, we've hit... We're on point number two. And our, the belt combo is like over halfway full now. Uh, nothing. So in the same way that caches are hit or miss, coats are hit or miss times like 10. Because... When cash is hit, you can maybe get like some class 5 armor or class 6 armor. You know, a Bitcoin or something, which is a couple hundred thousand. But uh, when the coats hit... the co Well, the coats hit less often, but their the value of their loot is bigger. Uh, I actually want to go back and uh, point this out. Because it took me a while to figure out this part, this uh, specific route. That key is like 60 or 70 thousand, by the way. West 219 is not particularly valuable, but... Um, Instead of going out that that main, let's go one more time. Instead of going out uh, that gate right there, which is what I used to do, because you have to go around like a fence and then bushes and stuff to get to the next house, you take a hard left and go between the sheds. And uh, there's a little cutaway in the fence, because otherwise you'd have to run like this house. You'd have to run around uh, the entire thing to get to this door. And uh, I like to call this the useless house because I thought that it took me a long time to realize there are no coats. And I'd get bummed and then I'd remember there's a duffel bag up top. So I always, to remember number four, and uh, number three I mean on the map, uh, it's a, um, it's the useless house. But the, the important thing about the useless house is that it has a useful shed. Uh, it has two toolboxes and a duffel bag. We got a car battery out of that last duffel bag. Heavy as hell, and not as valuable this wipe. At least it wasn't near the start of the wipe. But, uh... They... If you need them, I think you need, like, a total of seven or eight when you're starting out. Now, those are... are the, they're very nice to find, because otherwise it's, like, 60 to 80k each. And several need to be found in raid. This is another spot that took me a long time to realize was here. Um, instead of running to the right, back out the way we would have gone like to the main road, this gate right here opens. So uh, yeah, blends in pretty well, but you can go right out and uh, go to this greenhouse. This panel right here is open, but these um, these logs prevent you from jumping in or from running into it normally. So you have to slide, uh, otherwise you won't fit. Or if you mess up the slide, you can either go into this door or that door right there. Those are both, both uh, blasted open. My general philosophy for storing my loot when uh, I'm doing something like this, either scaving or doing whatever, just trying to take tons of loot, I always put the, the items in as small of a, a pocket as they'll fit, so one slot's going one slot as often as possible until we run out and two slots, etc. But yeah, this house uh, is important. There's a cheeky coat hidden behind that door. This one has four coats in it, and I believe a duffel, maybe? Uh, we'll see in a, a moment. Cigarettes. We didn't really get too lucky on this run. But, uh, this is st it still ends up being a pretty darn valuable run. Gas station office that has a safe behind it. 
cabin key. That's a, uh, I think that's a quest key, So, but I believe the quest gives it to you, so it's not super useful. Another car battery. Just weighing my, my ass down. The inertia when you're carrying two car batteries is insane, by the way. Uh, I never felt it quite so hard as uh, I have in this run. There's a, a duffel bag in this red shed right across the street if you run out from the cabin and turn right. Nothing in there. Sometimes loose tools can be on that shelf. The toolbox shot doing its best to camouflage in the next shed over. A while ago I did a, a guide on how to do the caches, how to hit all the caches on shoreline on each half of the map. And that included this cache, but we skipped over most of these duffel bags and coats and stuff. But here is where the runs overlap. Uh, the cache is right here next to this shed. You just go out, you hit the toolbox, go out, turn right, and then turn right again. Uh, yeah, that inertia was really kicking in hard. There are two coats inside this shed directly across from the uh, the cache. And this is what I mean by coats being hit or miss. Often it's miss, but when the hits hit, they're big. Uh, there's another coat in here. Uh, this is point nine on the map. There is nothing else in this house, so you don't even have to go into the rest of it. Uh, these sheds confused me for a really long time because there's like four right next to each other and some of them have stuff and, or half of them have stuff and half of them don't. But this, uh, you go out from the point nine, turn right, uh, about 180 degrees and, uh, that, that shed has something. Go through the fence, take a 90 degree turn, skip the, the shed directly to your right and go to the one in front of you. That one has a toolbox. This is point uh, 11 on the map. Point 12 takes us into this house. Which I almost went to the wrong spot, but this is, to me, it's the best way to do it. Uh, this house has an Easter egg in it. There's a breachable door with a chair on the ceiling inside. Um, and there's also a duffel bag on the inside as well. It's, it's tucked away behind the couch next to the bed. That door to the left right there is the breachable one. I've breached it so many times looking for stuff and uh, I'm disappointed every time. But if you go out that door, take a 90 degree turn to the left. Uh, that shed is the only other one that has anything in it. All the other ones in this little section are empty. So from here you can run out this greenhouse right across the road to the dumpster with the blue fence because there's a cache tucked away in there. And eventually we do end up tossing one of the car batteries because it's it's just too much. It's not every run you get two car batteries, but there have been a lot for me where I get like gas tanks and vases and just too much big stuff that is valuable, but like you can do a little more, be a little more efficient with your space. I was too darn heavy to get over the uh, the taller section of the round thing, even after tossing a car battery. We're at like counting that car battery I tossed. I think we're at like 50 kilograms of loot now. And this is when we just start um, trading out loot, so I can keep the stuff as I find it. This is another really important particular uh, house. Uh, you run from that cache directly across the road to the left next to the tank and then through that gate. Um, this has two coats, some loose loot, and a text bond inside. This text bond can have Tetrises, it can have uh, GPUs, it can have pretty much anything. I have yet to find a GPU, but I have got a Tetris out of it. But people tend to know that this is here, it's right in that drawer. Uh, we didn't happen to get anything this time. But, that's fine, that's fine. A lot of times you'll find that one house looted of this whole village. Uh, just because people like to go check for that. You can find some loose loot in this red shed if you take uh, go out of the white house, take a 90 degree left, and uh, take another 90 degree left, 
go through the fence. There's a handrail there, but I have no room and I'm not about to take that. Handrails are pretty valuable if you don't have anything else competing with them for space. They're not like super valuable, but they're better than nothing. Uh, they're just too big. They're like 40k to vendor and they take up six slots, so you can be a little more efficient with your space. Uh, there's nothing in the house behind me except a couple pieces of the loose loot, but there's a duffel bag out front. And then if you go directly to the shed across from the duffel bag, there's a coat inside. Uh, that's for point number 18, I guess. And then this is point 19 right here. Just a, a toolbox inside the next shed over. On the map, I didn't really number the these later sections too well. Because there's so many things right next to each other. Um... Uh, I like to check this this car trunk for loot. I've never found anything in it, but once on customs, I found a green battery in a trunk, so I'd do it anyways. Uh, there's a cache right next to Svetli Dead End, uh, the truck at the Svetli Dead End. Uh, not a bad idea to hit. That is point twenty, and then we go to twenty one, which is this house in this fence. There's a coat in a duffel bag, as a map genie has kindly informed us. And but it is all the way inside, sadly. Right there. Director's key, that's one of my favorite keys, honestly. I just enjoy going up there to loot the safe. It's fun to kick the door in, you know? We all, uh, that was a coal pack shield we just got rid of. Not super valuable, so. But again, this, this loot run is a uh, loot by a thousand uh, items. Or money by a thousand loots, whatever you want to call it. So, uh, you just hit both of the sheds outside of the, uh, the house at point 21. The shed to my left right here is not enterable from this side of the fence. You have to, um, and there's nothing in it anyway, so you can skip it entirely. But, uh, if you're not super heavy, you can easily hop up on those tires and jump the fence. You, uh, if you're on the other side. I got mixed up with the map for a moment, and I thought there was a toolbox in here. Uh, but as as the fence is concerned, from either side you can hop over it. The side we just went on, use the tires, and then the uh, to go the other way, you hop on that blue dumpster. Um, but from there, you just go into the then the next house housed area. Take a left around the corner of the empty shed that we entered, and there's a toolbox in this one. The shed next to the wood pile. Uh, the shed, the long shed with a ton of wood and concrete sacks in front of it has a big toolbox in it as well. Get some pliers. I don't like repellent. It's not very valuable. Uh, again, you can hop these tires or you can go around the fence either way. It's still relatively easy even when you do have a ton of weight worth of loot. There is a toolbox in here. I don't often make that jump myself to, uh get that toolbox. I usually like to go straight for the uh, the house, but that is a thing you can do. This house has a, uh, a coat, a duffel, a toolbox, and a loose tool spawn, which I found like ratchets and bulbexes on the, uh, the loose loot spawn. Duffel bags always have a chance of good stuff. I found a GPU in one this wipe. It was very nice. So Malyanka on that bed is where the loose spawn is. And then another toolbox. Nice big pile of stuff. Shustrello is relatively valuable. I just don't like it because it's ugly to me. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit vain like that, so I don't like to pick it up. Same story with tool sets. Those are like 20k, but I just don't like looking at them because they take up four spots. Uh, right outside this house is a cache in the bush. For, uh, I guess this is all kind of point twenty five. We got a plague mask. That's like 60 or 70k on its own right there, and we can just wear it. Doesn't take inventory space. And the final thing on this route is the coat in the shed. So that's that's the route. Once you uh, do it enough times, and you start to remember where all the stuff is, you can do it front ways, back ways, half ways, however you want to do it. Here is the loot of the uh, the entire run. Uh, so, like we said, the Plague Mask is like 60 or 70, the Saigonine is probably 15, the Makarov I brought in, 
Uh, Alyanka's like 30 or 40k, the book's 20 to 30k, bolts are 30k right now. They've been 40 to 50 this wipe at points, so those are valuable. The all, Just all this stuff vendors for a lot, this looks like... Uh, let's see, what else do we have down here? The car batteries, another 60k, another set of bolts. So we're probably looking at um, somewhere around 400,000 for all of this stuff. Gas uh, director's key isn't valuable on its own. Gas office isn't valuable on its own. Um, these gun parts aren't super valuable either. Honestly, I probably could have tossed them for some of the stuff, but you know it's whatever. For like the Schusterlo would have been a better call. Uh, maybe keeping the car battery over those uh, like an RFB spacer. And yeah, that, that that might may have been a better choice, but we were worried about weight at that point. So this is probably 400k at least and we uh we didn't even really get anything particularly valuable aside from the car battery and the plague mask and i i guess the sanitar key like that's there the, the the resort key so uh yeah and there's plenty of opportunity to get valuable stuff it's just this was a little bit of an unlucky run but this is this is what i mean by when you get unlucky you have a 400,000 ruble run you know um so I think this is a very good route. Highly recommend it. You can do it as a scale, the PMC, however you want to at any point in the raid, really. Past the first, like, five minutes of a raid on PMCs, generally this is a low traffic area. Every once in a while you might get, like, a, a camper running through, or a, a camper up on the hill to the south. Uh, someone running through just to get to Road to Lighthouse from the cottage or whatever. Might dip their toes in there. Who knows? But it's not as high traffic as Resort or like weather station or pier or anything like that. So, again, highly recommended. Uh, I hope it helps. If it did, uh, I would appreciate it if you dab on that like button, yeet that subscribe, turn notifications on. Uh, but that's all I have for you today. I, if, you will, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Or I stream every weekday from noon Eastern US time to usually 4 p.m. Eastern US time. Oftentimes I go later. And uh, I play Path of Exile and Escape from Tarkov while I'm live. But I'm always happy to answer questions about any game that I know about, uh, regardless of what game I'm playing. So feel free to come check me out there, or, or just leave it in the comments, either way. But like I said, appreciate you watching, hope it helps, and I hope you have a good rest of your wipe. Yeet!